So we have our um, data here, right? So people, renewal years, types, whatever we want here. The data is not important. So what I'm going to do is show some of the cube functions, right? What's possible. Okay, so I'm here in my data set, insert, pivot table, and I have to click add this to data model or else I won't be able to get the OLAP to come up later. All right, now I will show you. All right, so now let's say we want state in the rows, name and values, and then type in the columns. Okay, so now you know, okay, so that, that tells us something. Uh, five in California, one in Michigan, and that's an M type. All right, but now we want to do something else. We want to say, okay, so I'm going to go to OLAP tools, convert to formulas. All right, so now what I can do is I, I want to say that I want to have California... and New Mexico by each other here and then Florida and Georgia can stay like that and then Indiana, Michigan and Pennsylvania I want those three together and I don't want grand total at all and it's all still the, the pivot table right um, here I can't get rid of that. I can get rid of this. Okay. So now I've got the CEM types. Got things divided off into regions that make sense. Um, okay. So all of these are uh, formulas. And I can't add new data in the format that it's in now, but what I can do if I discovered that, oh, some of my data was wrong and that uh, Frank is actually, so well, let's look first. Okay, so um, we're gonna say Michigan, right? So Michigan right now is one. So we find out if Frank is really Michigan and Henry was really Michigan, okay, uh, so do I have to refresh data? Yeah. Okay. So now it updates. The thing that I don't think you can do, maybe you can, but if we did have somebody new in a different state or a different type, we'd have a problem. But at least the way that it's like this, if the data is not going to, you know, you're going to have to add more data, then the cube functions will work. And this is a really great thing. And you can um, even say if you want to move this out here. All right, so we can move this around and it's still live data and that's your cube function. All right, so I'm going to stop my sharing. All right, so... That's awesome. Thanks. So, so do you use cube functions? Yeah, and that just reminded me, I, like, probably about three months ago, I wrote a few guest posts for uh, Rob Colley's blog about cube functions. Mm -hmm. I, gotta, I don't think they ever got published. I gotta um, check up with them and see see what uh, so where they're at. <laughs> Step up, yeah, Rob. Exactly. Just about okay. cube members. Yeah. What's that? So that cube member prop cube at the time I said I didn't know, but they connect to the OLAP cubes. So that cube member property that was um, the answer to last week's challenge. So what does that do? Anyone know? So we can <laughs> inform our listeners. I'm not gonna be the best to answer that because I I've used cube members through. Power Pivot, 
And I believe cube member property, like you said, is only connecting to an OLAP cube, which isn't necessarily available with a power pivot data model. So I don't know that you can use cube member property with a power pivot data model. I think it's only through an OLAP cube where you actually see the properties of that specific row. Like if there's, uh, what do they call them, properties or like kind of characteristics of that data that are attached to that row, you can pull in the property and kind of use it as like a subset of data or, or a property, right, of that of that specific row in the OLAP cube. So, I, I, yeah, I can't fully answer that one. Uh, right. But I, I'm pretty sure the cube member property can't be used with Power Pivot. It's really just cube members and, uh, and all the other cube functions. Okay, got gotcha. you. But yeah. I think those cube functions, to me, are, are amazing, especially with the Power Pivot data model. I think it's it totally, like, the possibilities are endless with those things because, like you just showed, you don't have to have your data in a pivot table. You're not restricted to a pivot table, even though Power Pivot is, you know, the pivot tables that come out of Power Pivot are much more flexible than a standard pivot table, right? You can write measures in there and get very creative. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you can then just bring in that data straight into a spreadsheet like you just did with completely bypassing a pivot table with these Q member properties are incredible. It, it, wow. it just, like you can, like, I mean, you could build, like you are talking about earlier with the sum ifs functions, you could build a pivot table, right? You could kind of, manually build a pivot table. But with cube members, I think I think we haven't even scratched the surface on that stuff yet. With what you could do with a dashboard, you know, you could feed that into charts, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know, pull millions of rows into a cell. So Oz, what, what what do you see as a as a hot 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 sauce ranking on that? A in sriracha that. ranking. Um you know, I wanna give it I know because John is saying that there is is that they're amazing that this and that the sky is limit. I'm gonna give it a four. Okay, I was leaning toward a three because they're not used very much. Right. But I really appreciate John saying that there's so much more available. We just need to dig into it. Even in that even in that cube member function that you're looking at, you can pull. You can use like the uh, autofill to see all the different members within that specific table and the, the dimensions in that table. There's mm-hmm. a, you know, it's an autofill dropdown, so you can you can also reference other cells like what the convert to um, formulas does with the pivot table. You can then basically create or you know kind of a very dynamic um, model out of that because you could then. You could have like in cell A6 there, where it says Florida. You could have a drop down there, ah. and, you know, and then change that, and that changes everything. That yes. feeds the entire model. Um, yes. It, it, with with a million plus rows behind it. So I don't know. I'm I'm excited about them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I think once I it took me a while to figure out, and there's not a lot of information out there on them, mm-hmm. especially like. I know one thing that really took me a lot of time was figuring out how to bring, like, return cube values between certain dates. Like, if you wanted to do a date range, maybe you just wanted to do, like, a, you know, this, this numbers for a specific quarter or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do that in the cube value. You can set a range of dates and that kind of stuff, but it, there's not a lot of info out there on, on how to do that. It's kind of a mystery. So I think that's one thing that's there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of land yet to be discovered.